The story would begin a little more than half a year after the Universal Tournament. Goku would be training on the planet of Beerus, accompanied by the tutelage of Whis. Goku would carry a powerful Kamehame to attack his master, but suddenly, a gigantic energy appears. It was nothing more and nothing less than the same Daishinken, same that informs the king Zenosama requested the presence of Son Goku. Goku confused would ask for the reason, to what Daishinkan responds that it was a delicate matter to be more specific, that multiple trips of the time to convenience. To what Goku would repeat, time travel? Daishinkan would explain, the inhabitants of Universe 7 have broken the universal rules by traveling through time at convenience, without any permission was not only one or two, were many times, that the earthlings of Universe 7 do this practice. Moreover, they not only traveled through time, but also manipulated it. Goku would have an idea what the priest was referring to as this situation of time travel, begin since trunks from the future travel to the present to save the planet from the Frieza. Mr. Goku, please accompany me to Zenosama's palace where you will be informed with more details. But first let me tell you that your actions and words will determine whether the planet Earth as you know it continues to exist or ceases to exist. Goku would put a more serious face. The Saiyan agrees to accompany Daishinkin, these disappear. Whis would put a face of disappointment and say, and that Mr. Beerus warned them multiple times, suddenly you hear big explosions. Beerus yawning says, oh, those five months of nap were nothing. Finally wake up, I have to inform you of something that just happened. Goku arrives at the palace next to Daishinkin. The two Zenosamas would shout Goku's name cheerfully. Goku would greet very cheerfully. Zenosama says, Goku, as you're my friend, I wanted you to hear my decision. To which a confused Goku would ask, what is it about? The other Zenosama speaks, we have decided to exterminate planet Earth along with all its inhabitants. Goku nervously says, but why? Zenosama explains, the constant violations by time travel to convenience are being a problem. But why do you say that Zenosama? Thanks to time travel, I was able to find you a good friend. The two Zenosamas look at each other and at the same time say, You're right! Daishinkin says, That's right, I thank you again for that. That's the reason why they were not punished. However, in this last month alone, eight new time travels from planet Earth have been recorded and as a consequence, it has left many open gaps in space-time. Goku repeats, Gaps? To which Daishinkin would explain with a more serious tone. Yes, these gaps are connected to Universe 7 with somewhere else in the multiverse. This could cause a universal catastrophe. Daishinkin proceeds to open a holographic map showing multiple universes of other multiverses being affected among them, Jujutsu Kaisen. Goku asks Zenosama as a favor not to wipe out planet Earth and offers to fix the problems that have been caused. Zenosama would think about it for a few seconds and then accedes to Goku's request. Zenosama says, As we are friends, I'll give you the opportunity to fix this mistake. But let me warn you that the more time passes, the more breaches could disperse throughout the Universe 7 and would no longer only solve the problem by eliminating the planet where these anomalies come from, but would also have to eliminate the entire universe. Daishinkin would explain to Goku that he would have to eliminate the new eight breaches scattered throughout the multiverse, and if he succeeds, he will be able to return to his universe. Daishinkin would explain a little more about the universal problems that could occur if nothing is done immediately. Goku would only understand that he would have to destroy the eight breaches to keep his planet safe. Daishinkin opens a portal. Daishinkin says, and this world is the first gap. Goku walks towards the portal, but before entering, Daishinkin says some last words. Mr. Goku, if you were to die in any of these worlds, let me tell you that everyone will forget the memories they have with you. Your existence will disappear completely as if you were never born. Goku looks with a worried face to Daishinkin. The Saiyan looks at the portal saying, Very well, I will go. Goku enters the portal, and the Saiyan arrives at the world of Jujutsu Kaisen. Goku would be in Tokyo near the Jujutsu school and facing Yuji Itadori and Satoru Gojo. Who are you? On the other hand, Wiz was informed with the greatest detail of all the facts by Daishinkin. After Wiz passed the information to the god, these decide to go immediately to planet Earth, to be more exact, to the Katsu Corporation. Vegeta is the first to see them. But if it is Wiz and Beerus, 
Beera says, Vegeta, I need to see Bulma. It's urgent, so hurry up. Vegeta would ask why they wanted to see Bulma. Beerus, with a serious face and somewhat angry, would say, Obey! Bring Bulma immediately. Vegeta would obey, remaining intrigued. Bulma appears. Bulma says, Ah, but if it's Mr. Beerus and Mr. Whis, is something wrong? Vegeta would feel a threatening aura. Whis would warn Bulma to watch her words and answer with all sincerity. Bulma would get nervous. Beerus asks, are you the human who has been traveling through time constantly? Bulma would get very nervous and try to deflect the conversation. Beerus seriously says, Answer! Vegeta would feel Beerus's threatening key. Vegeta shouts, Bulma! Answer Mr. Beerus's question! Bulma admits to having traveled in time for several times this last month. After that, Bulma would make many complaints, even blaming the god for stupid things, and at the end, she offers him a lot of food as an apology. Beerus approaches Bulma and slaps her, gently slapping her face aside. Vegeta is shocked to see such a scene being on show. Whis warns Vegeta to think twice before taking any action. Bulma gets angry and lashes out at the god. Beerus raises his hand, producing Hikai energy aiming at Bulma's face. Vegeta shouts, What are you planning to do, Beerus? I've already endured many times your stupidities. Who do you think you are to disobey me or raise your voice to me? Remember that I am the god of destruction of this universe. Vegeta would ask nervously what was happening and why all this so sudden. Whis would explain, Mr. Vegeta, remember that you were warned several times by Mr. Beerus and me about time travel? However, you all decided to ignore us and now because of Miss Bulma, this planet or rather the entire universe is in danger. Vegeta is surprised as well as Bulma. Wes asks, it was eight times that you used that time machine, or am I wrong? Where did you go? Bulma would answer nervously, I was just building a machine that can travel anywhere in the world in time. The times I traveled in it were just tests to perfect my creation. But Bulma, how could you do that after we were warned how dangerous it is to use time travel? I know and I'm sorry, but I'm a scientist. Making a machine like that could be a turning point for all of humanity. Wes continues explaining, as I was saying, because of those test trips that Mrs. Bulma mentioned, eight rifts have been created in space-time that Son Goku is now trying to destroy to save this planet. Kakarot! My father was the one who discovered all this! I admit that I am ashamed that I did not realize it before. He himself was the one who warned me that these gaps are connected to Universe 7 with some other place in the multiverse, and this could cause a universal catastrophe. The fastest way to fix it was to destroy this planet with all its inhabitants so that the gaps would disappear, since the travels come from here. Are very lucky that the Great King Zenosama holds Goku in high esteem and decided to inform him of the situation before making a decision. But the truth is that every second counts from now on since the breaches could disperse all over the universe and Zenosama will be forced to destroy the whole universe. Vegeta could not believe what he was hearing. Beera says, your disobedience and irresponsibility, you'll have to pay for it with your death and the destruction of this planet. Bulma would tremble with fear. Vegeta stands in front of Bulma. Even if Bulma is responsible, I won't let you hurt her. Beerus with a straight face answers, Then Vegeta, you will be the one to take the punishment? Remember that you are still an insignificant being in front of me. Wes explains, if Universe 7 disappears, Mr. Beerus also disappears, that's why he's so angry. Beerus lowers his hand. Beerus rises to the sky, completely destroying the Capsule Corporation. Let this be the last time idiots like you disrespect me like this. Ah, no matter what I do, it won't change anything. It would cost me the slightest effort to destroy this planet with all of you. But this is a test that Zenosama put Son Goku through, so I won't interfere. Everything is in Goku's hands again. Bulma, if Goku fails, consider yourself the human who sacrificed all the lives of Universe 7 for a stupid machine. Bulma would be on her knees. Bulma says in tears, I never thought to cause all this. Vegeta asks, Tell me what could happen if the breaches are not closed. As I said before, the gaps are connected to other worlds very different from ours outside of our multiverse. If nothing is done, beings from another multiverse would easily enter ours, beings with totally unknown powers as well as their intentions and other words. We could be heading for a multiversal war. That is why if one or all 12 universes must be eliminated, Senosama would not hesitate. Beerus says, Wes, let's look for the breaches. 
Will you look for it? That's right, the eight breaches should still be on this scattered planet even if we can't destroy them. From here we can work on trying to make them not disperse so quickly off planet buying time. Are you a sorcerer? Gojo would say he is not, as he had never seen him in his life. Goku introduces himself as he normally would to anyone. I come from another universe from a different dimension than this one. Gojo smiles. This sounds interesting. I'm Satoru Gojo and he is Goji Edadori. It seems we have a shared problem. Gojo in his mind would think how strange the energy of the guy in front of him was. Gojo, you seem to be strong. Would you like to show me your strength by fighting me a little bit? Gojo had been interested in Goku's weirdness. Goku, to hear the proposal of Satoru Gojo, would accept, excited. Goku says, it is noted that you are strong, however, your key is very strange. Gojo would put a face of confusion to hear the term key. Gojo responds, key? I guess you mean my power? Let me inform you that in this world, we call it cursed energy. Now I'll show it to you. Get ready, Son Goku. Gojo releases a red taking Goku by surprise. Everything is destroyed by the great power of Satoru. Frightened Itadori asks, Master, don't you think that you went a little too far? I doubt very much that that person came out alive after that attack. Gojo smiles. Dear student Itadori, let me tell you that I would never ask a weak being to fight against me. All the dust of the debris disappears, appearing the image of Goku protecting himself with his arms from the attack. Itadori. Impressive! He was able to resist a direct attack from Master Gojo. Goku smiles, disappearing. Goku appears behind Gojo and tries to hit him, but Goku is surprised when he can't touch him. Goku again tries to attack in several points, but still can't connect a single hit. Itadori says, Goku is very fast and very strong, but the Wall of Infinity is at another level. Goku stops his attacks. Goju explains, this is called Infinity. Any attack on me slows down to the point that it is impossible to touch me. Goku would be somewhat confused. Goju explains, in other words, I'm a magnet, and everything around me is also a magnet. If you join two magnets of the same pole, what you get is that they push each other. Now, do you understand? Goku answers, I understand it is a powerful defense technique, but don't you think it's boring? If you spend all your time like this, you won't be able to fight either. Or am I wrong? Gojo smiles and answers, of course I can. Gojo removes his blindfold, revealing his eyes. Goku excited says, very well then, right now I'll destroy your defense. Goku becomes a super saiyan. Itadori would be very surprised. How spectacular! His muscles grew three more sizes and also now he's blonde! He became stronger? Knew you had something hidden. Goku uses the Super Saiyan too. I think he transformed again but now lightning covers all his aura and his appearance is more aggressive. Besides, what's all this pressure I feel? Goku gets in position to do the Kamehame. Gojo would be very surprised by the great amount of energy that Goku creates in his palms, and Gojo says, Son Goku, try hard as I will respond with something extremely powerful. Itadori surprised says, Don't tell me that you'll use that attack. Gojo creates his ritual to be able to use purple. Says, you're very powerful. The different worlds are spectacular, to which Gojo would respond with a big smile. And you're not far behind that attack really surprised me, to which Goku with a more serious look tells Gojo that he is really strong, but he knows that he did not fight with all his strength. All this would happen with a Itadori in the background petrified of surprise. Gojo says, Goku, not long ago we have felt great overwhelming powers that appear and disappear but curiously has not reappear. 
I set out to investigate a little, but I could not feel again trace of those energies. Goku responds, that must be the gap that unites this world to mine. I have to find it and destroy it if I don't do it quickly, everything I know will disappear. Gojo would approach a few steps to Goku and say smiling, farewell. What do you think if we help you find what you're looking for? If you paid attention, you've already realized that this is a school, a school that I direct with very strong students. They're not yet at my level, but there are many who have the ability. All of us will help you to find what you're looking for, but in return, join us while you accomplish your goal. Goku would accept almost immediately. So, you're already a new partner, Goku would meet most of the students and teachers, but still on his own, he would look for the crack all over the place. That same day on October 31st at 21 o'clock p.m., a veil appeared in Shibuya, Tokyo. All humans were captured by it. All the saucers would put hands to work to investigate and give solution to the problem. Just like the series, those responsible wanted the presence of Satoru Gojo. In the middle of the crowd, Satoru Gojo makes presence entering the veil. Gojo would make a recognition throughout the place and would have realized immediately that is what those of responsible were looking for. Gojo worried says, this energy is. On the other hand, Itadori would be very surprised and distressed to learn that his master will do all the work alone. Itadori would ask to support him. Gojo goes down to the train station encountering powerful curses. It looks like they had everything prepared. Right now, I'll finish you all off. Jogo responds, I hope and you don't run away when you see this. Jogo the curse shows somewhat an unusual object. It would be about the bridge that Goku was looking for. That's it! Jogo says, I imagine that a sorcerer of your caliber could witness the energy of this thing. Gojo responds, That's right. Seven days ago I was able to witness a great power that appeared and disappeared over and over again. As time passed, the energy was much stronger, but when I set out to investigate, that energy disappeared completely, and the next day, that man appeared. That man? A friend I just met. Someone unimportant. Now, I understand that you were the idiots who took possession of that cube, but how did you make that energy disappear so suddenly, and what will you do with that power? One of the curses explains that apparently that cube was an entrance to an unknown world with great power. We have tried everything to enter or even see what is inside this cube, but the only thing we could see with difficulty is a purple cat on the other side. However, it is impossible to communicate or to do anything. Apparently, this cube needs a key or something to use it as a portal to the world that teaches us. Gojo says, How interesting, but you still don't answer my question. Damn, sorcerers, today will be the day you all die. Jogo, with the other curses, absorbed the energy of the cube, increasing its power in an exponential way. We have been absorbing the energy of this cube little by little because if we had absorbed it all at once, maybe it would have killed us all because of the incredible power it has. The reason why this energy disappeared is because of the veal. Now I understand. Joogu explains, when we found this cube levitating through the skies, we took possession of it and obviously, we knew that its power would attract any sorcerer, so we made a veal to cover its presence. Jogo shouts, Satoru Gojo, you'll be the first to witness our great power combined with this cube! Jogo jumps to attack Satoru Gojo. Gojo activates his barrier. You misunderstood Gojo? Now that we have absorbed the energy of the cube, we are much more powerful. Your barrier won't stop us. Jogo advances with surprising speed. With a fierce shout, he launches a wave of cursed energy towards Gojo. The infinity barrier absorbs the energy, but the intensity of the attack causes the air around Gojo to distort. Your attacks won't succeed in hurting me. While Gojo is busy handling the energy wave, Hanami and Dagon other curses approach from different angles. Hanami uses his ability to manipulate nature causing giant trees and plants to rise from the ground, trapping and limiting Gojo's movements. Hanami shouts, while you concentrate on Jogo, we'll catch you! Dagon says, don't forget about me! Dagon launches tentacles of cursed water that emerge from a crack in the ground, trying to trap Gojo. The attack is fast and almost unstoppable. The constant pressure and the combination of coordinated attacks begin to wear down his barrier. As Gojo moves to avoid the attacks, Jogo begins to concentrate a huge amount of cursed flames. His fire skill intensifies, creating an explosion of flames that he launches directly towards Gojo. 
The intensity of the fire is so high that Gojo's infinity barrier begins to waver and break under the pressure of the attack. As the barrier weakens, the curses intensify their offensive. Hanami and Dagon continue to attack with a combination of natural and aquatic powers, creating a constant barrage of attacks that further wear down the barrier, and with a last-ditch effort, Shogo channels all the absorbed energy into a massive explosion, an attack that combines fire and cursed energy in a single blow. Last engulfs Gojo, who tries to maintain his barrier in a desperate attempt to protect himself. The explosion manages to break Gojo's barrier, which disintegrates under the pressure of the attack. Gojo is thrown into the air, clearly weakened. The gap is proven too powerful even for him. Gojo in a weak voice says, How? How is that possible? We now have the power of the cube. Infinity is now no match for our combined cursed energy. After those words, Kenjaku appears. I had his plan B to lock you in the prison realm, but the power of that cube is more than amazing. Gojo on the ground would see his best friend standing in front of him. Let's cut this nonsense now, I'll finish this sorcery. Jojo keeps absorbing energy from the cube, creating a big fire arrow aiming at Gojo. Kenjaku says, I know you're confused, I'd like to continue appreciating you a little, but we better hurry. Gojo shouts, Who the hell are you? My eyes and my mind say that you're a Suguru Ghetto, but my heart says otherwise. Kenjaku smiles showing his true identity, and then Gojo sets out to finish off Gojo. Satoru Gojo dies! At the same moment, Goku makes his appearance, hitting Jogo, smashing him against the wall. Kenjaku is surprised, as are the others. But how strong? These damned sorcerers of no end, Mahito transforms and kills many humans in front of Goku's eyes, provoking great anger and the cyan. Gojo would be surprised to see Goku. Gojo shouts, Goku, that you just hit is the crack you were looking for. I could see it. Tell me, are you okay? Gojo heard would say yes and warn Goku about how the curses are taking advantage of that cue. Even my rituals were defeated by that great power. You have to be very careful. Jogo says, now I understand. This is the man you mentioned a few moments ago. How incredible. Even with the power of that cube, that blow managed to destroy my face. Goku says, but even so it seems not to have caused you any damage. At that moment, Gojo would explain to Goku about the reverse rituals and about the curses, and how the cube increased the abilities and powers of the enemy. The situation is critical. I see that I don't see the need to leave them alive. Machito says, are you thinking of defeating all of us? How funny. If you notice your friend, the strongest sorcerer of today is on the ground badly wounded. There are six of us. I think you should think very well what you will do, otherwise we will kill all these people. Goku would stare at Majito and says, Now there will be five. Goku disappears, appearing behind Majito to then completely exterminate him with his power, turning him into dust. Damn! Who the hell is that guy? Goku says, that guy deserved to die for murdering innocent people, now return the cube immediately. At that very moment, every cell in Jogo's body warned him of the great danger posed by the guy in front of him. Jogo began to slowly retreat in an attempt to escape. Goku walked towards Gojo, Goku gives him some of his energy making Gojo recover and get back on his feet. Gojo in his mind would say, so this is the key. Even though my wounds have not healed, I feel much more energy than before. Gojo, with the help of his reverse ritual, would heal his wounds. One of the curses would desperately yell at Jogo to escape and put Plan B into action. Jogo, without thinking twice, would escape from the place. Hanami and Dagon confront Goku in order to gain more time. Both curses would know that they are about to face someone with a power they could not handle. Gojo laughs. I knew you were strong, but I never thought you were that strong. Goku smiles, I'm glad you're okay now. Gojo says, just by feeling your aura, I can calculate how powerful you are. Damn it. That means that in our fight, you held back too much. 
Gojo with a more serious tone turns to Goku. Goku, I leave you to these curses. Since you're here, I can take care of something more urgent. If I don't destroy the veal and help my students, there will be many more deaths. Very well. Don't worry, I'll take care of these guys and recover the cube. Go and save yours. Gojo nods and without wasting any more time, disappears with his ritual. All right, get ready. Gojo appears outside the building, but he feels the presence of Megumi facing someone powerful. His opponent was not a simple curse. Megumi would be fighting against her father, Toji Zenit. Toji would have a clear advantage as in the series, with his overwhelming strength and techniques would be pushing Megumi to the limit. Megumi feels cornered. Toji would be sure to kill him in the next blow. Megumi, without any escape, would choose her last option. Although this monster lacks sense, for this occasion it will be useful. Toji approaches at great speed to attack. Megumi says, Sacred Artifact oscillates and vibrates. Eight Hilt Sword General Divine Maharaga. Toji would be face to face against Megumi. Give your best. Toji would stare at Megumi and be shot. Maharaga strikes aiming at the sorcerer. Are you? Toji requires. Gojo says, Huff, I almost didn't make it in time. Gojo had saved Megumi from the blow. Hey, what the hell are you trying to kill your son? Are you crazy or what? When Toji stares at Megumi and recognizes him, a crucial moment occurs. Although Toji is not sentimental in the traditional sense, his nature as a father makes him stop the moment he sees his son. Something inside him is activated by the memory of Megumi. He would have an internal reaction, a small struggle between his puppet instinct and his memories as a human, although he would not show it in words. His connection with Megumi would be strong enough for the ritual to control to beat him. So, you have become a sorcerer, Megumi. This would make Toji not attack his son directly, but it would not overtly protect him either. It would simply allow him to stay alive on the battlefield while focusing his attention on the other threats. Gojo, I didn't think you came to save that brat. By the way, it's been a long time since we had a serious fight. I want a rematch. Now, I don't have time for you. Right now, my priority is there. Gojo would say pointing at Maharaga. Megumi, back off. If you want to watch from afar, but don't intervene in this. Right now, Goku is taking care of the curses. I will take care of these threats. Megumi would apologize for summoning the Shirigami. Gojo, come. By the way, they left you very hurt again. Stay seated over there and don't bother. Gojo proceeds to take many pictures of Megumi. This will be for your classmates. Megumi would stare at her father from afar. Previously, I wanted to tell you, but you didn't let me. So now is the time. As you can see, he's your father. His name is Toji Zenit. Ah. <sighs> That maybe you already knew. Well, anyway, I was the one who killed him some time ago, and apparently, he was revived by a ritual. I mean, now your father is a puppet, and his lifespan is only a matter of time until he fulfills his goal. Maybe whoever did this ritual has placed you as his target. Right now, your father must be fighting internally against that not to attack you. Or maybe it's something else. I understand I'll stay here. Gojo, what a good boy. Toji is programmed to seek and eliminate the strongest opponents. Upon entering the scene and seeing Satoru, Gojo, and Maharaga, his natural instinct would be to choose the most powerful opponent. His initial focus would be on Gojo. However, Maharaga's presence also poses a massive threat, as the Shikigami is extremely dangerous and out of control. Thanks to the weakened ritual, Toji would shift his focus to the Shikigami. With his ability to wield cursed weapons and his unmatched physical prowess, he would decide to directly confront Maharaga despite knowing that he is a difficult enemy to defeat. Toji tries to attack in several directions. During this fight, Gojo would watch carefully, recognizing that although Toji is a puppet, he is still a formidable warrior. Gojo was ready to help, saying that the fight was no longer going anywhere. Besides, Maharaga would be adapting to Toji's techniques quickly. Toji, to see Gojo's intentions, says, Don't interfere, Gojo. I can handle this alone. Gojo, aware of Toji's tenacity, would subtly laugh and leave for a moment everything to Toji's hands. Very well, but hold this. Gojo throws a cursed weapon to Toji. That's it? Do you want me to finish the job then?
He's amazing! However, that monster adapts very quickly. Toji would try to overcome him with pure strength and speed, attacking from multiple angles and using his cursed weapon, but Maharaga would adapt quickly, making him more and more resistant to his attacks. Gojo, seeing that the battle is not advancing, proposes an alliance to Toji. Hey you! Even though we are not on the same side, we both know that if Maharaga remains unleashed, no one will survive and the person you want to protect will be in danger. I need us to fight together, just this once. Toji with a sarcastic smile replies, You always were good at talking brat, but if you think you can handle him alone, good luck. Toji asks, Could you handle him alone? Gojo answers, What kind of question is that? Of course I can, in case you haven't noticed I'm much stronger now than last time. Deep down, Toji knows that the only way to stop Maharaga is with Gojo's help. While Goku faces the remaining curses and Gojo together with Toji fight against Maharaga, Jogo keeps running away at full speed, taking the cube with him. He knows he must act fast and that there would be no time to lose. Jogo in his mind would say, Damn human, I don't know who that is, but for some strange reason, I know that even with the power of the cube I wouldn't be able to beat him. But everything will change soon, I just need a distraction, something bigger. After traveling a long distance, Jogo finally reaches a farther part of the city where the sorcerers have not yet reached. Itadori would be running around looking for his companions and suddenly, a dense, choking aura manifests behind him. Itadori, without the need to turn around, knew something was wrong. He turns his head slowly to see Jogo. Is the volcano head from that time? But he has something different. His power is much greater than when he faced Master Satura. Jogo says, At last, I found you, Sakuna boy, and Adori immediately takes a position to fight against the special rank. And Adori asks, keeping calm, What do you want from me? Jogo scoffs, I don't want anything from you, I want to talk to Sakuna. Then Jogo takes out a bag with ten fingers of Sakuna. And Adori is surprised to see the fingers, then hit by Jogo. Itadori could barely dodge the blow, but the pressure emanating from the curse makes him retreat. Jogo continues attacking, melting everything he touches into lava. Itadori says, I won't let it happen. Itadori manages to hit the curse, but it doesn't even flinch. Either you're very weak or the power of the cube is really great. I think it's both. Itadori asks, what is that cube? I don't know for sure yet, but your friends are desperate to get it. Itadori says, that means that's what Goku was looking for. If you become Sukuna, I'll give it to you and you will save me from having to force you by force. Never. Don't even think about it. I won't do it. As you like, I only ask you not to die. Not even I can control the power that gives me this cube. Jogo gathers cursed energy, turning into a big ball of flame. Jogo shoots against Itadori. Itadori tries to escape, but the attack is too powerful that manages to wrap him, leaving him very badly wounded with strong burns. My rooster Itadori would get up with great difficulty, his whole body trembled. Every step he took produced immense pain in Itadori's body. Jogo would approach the sorcerer with a smile full of malice and cruelty. Jogo says, it's useless to resist. Just eat your fingers and everything will be over. Itadori tries to hit the curse with a punch without energy. Jogo hits Itadori in the stomach, leaving him out of combat, kneeling on the ground. Curse! Jogo takes Sakuna's ten fingers and pushes them into Itadori's mouth by force. No! Itadori tried to scream, but his voice was drowned out by the power that was beginning to awaken inside him. The air around him became even heavier. Itadori's eyes glowed a deep red and a wicked smile alien to his own being of ears. Oh, finally, Sakuna's voice resounded deep and full of power. Jogo took a satisfied step back. Jogo says, Welcome, Sakuna. Jogo would fill him in on everything about the being that appeared and killed Majita, about Gojo, and about the cube that possesses enormous power. Back to Maharaga's combat against the sorcerers, the two warriors prepare for the fight putting aside their differences. Maharaga launches the first attack, a devastating sweep with his huge arm that distorts the earth and air and creating a vortex of destruction. 
Gojo uses his limitless barrier technique to slow the impact, but the power of the Shikigami is so immense that even the strongest saucer feels like a little pressure. Toji launches himself directly against Maharaga using the heavenly hull bird given to him by Gojo, capable of cutting any curse. The attack manages to hurt Maharaga, but the Shikigami had already adapted to the attack, regenerating his body and improving his resistance instantly. Toji mutters, the cursed one adapts too fast. Gojo, analyzing the situation, quickly deduces that they must attack in a coordinated manner if they want to defeat him. Gojo says, we will attack together. We need to overload his adaptive capacity. You attack from the front and I'll stop him with my domain. Gojo closes his eyes and begins to release the energy to activate his most powerful technique. Toji, without wasting time, nods and goes on the offensive. While Gojo prepares the ground for his final technique, and at the key moment, Gojo unleashes his infinite form. Trapping Maharaga in a space where the flow of information and movement slows almost to a halt, the creature is unable to adapt to this new reality. Toji, with his cursed weapon together with Gojo, takes the opportunity to deliver a critical blow. Toji's final attack pierces Maharaga, severing the connection between the Shikigami and its summoner, freeing Megumi from his control. Maharaga dissolves into thin air, and the battlefield falls silent. We defeated him, Toji says. Apparently you're stronger than before. I told you, if I wanted to, I would have defeated that Shikigami by myself. Toji smiles and says, thank you. Gojo asks, exactly why are you thanking me? Toji at that moment sticks the whole bird in his head, making the ritual disappear. For taking care of him. You're welcome. This time we managed to save someone who we love in common. Don't worry, he will still be in good hands. Megumi approaches. He's gone. Megumi would look at the corpse and see someone else. Gojo says, it takes another body to be able to do such a ritual. Megumi, your father is strong and wanted you to see it. He's proud of what you are now. Megumi lowers his head. Gojo places a hand on Megumi's shoulder and says, Megumi, you don't have to carry everything by yourself. It's time to move forward and help the others. Megumi lifts the hull bird and takes it with her. On the other hand, meanwhile, Goku has begun his confrontation against Hanami and Dagon. The curse is aware of the Saiyajin's immense power are using all the tricks at their disposal. The combined attacks of Hanami with his control of nature and Dagon with his aquatic abilities fill the battlefield with devastating attacks. Hanami shouts, we fight for the balance of the world, while you're nothing but an intruder. Goku, concentrated but relaxed, says, The balance you seek only brings death, and that I cannot allow. Goku transforms into Super Saiyajin 2, his aura glows brightly, causing glass to shatter and large debris to levitate. The curses couldn't believe what was in front of them, Goku moves at a speed they can't even see. In a matter of seconds, Goku finishes with Hanami and Dagon turning them into dust. Now there are two left. Who the hell are you? Goku responds, I'm a Saiyajin that does not belong to this world. Kenjaku in a desperate attempt tries to trap Goku in the confining prison, but before even Kenjaku tries something, Goku erases him from the map along with his cursed object. Now only you are left. Go ahead. Joso with his blood ritual tries to go through Goku, but this one doesn't get anything. Goku slowly approaches Choso while the latter, mentioned, keeps attacking him. Each time Goku pushes Choso back more and more, cornering him in a corner, producing a great fear to the hybrid. Choso says in surprise, my attack didn't even make a scratch on you. Choso resignedly says, ah, oh, do it, just finish me off. Goku produces energy in his right hand, aiming at Choso's face. But suddenly, Goku feels a great power just like all the saucers. This is... Goku seriously says, I really didn't want to do this. This is your chance to make things right. Stop hurting people. Goku returns to his base state and disappears. Make things right. Sakuna says, very well. I wonder if I will have to go to them or they will come to me. Goku appears a few meters away from Sakuna as well as Goju and the other saucers. Is everyone here yet? This is the end, Sakuna, we already took care of everyone, only you are missing. <laughs> I don't need anyone to finish off two or ten mediocre wizards. 
Kyoku asks, where is the cube? You mean this? Unbelievable. This cube is more than awesome. I don't need all my fingers if I have this. So that's what the other guy was planning? Where is it? Of gratitude for having given me all this, I gave him a dignified death. I calcined him until his soul disappeared. But he's not important. The important thing is here. I wonder what will happen if... Sabrina swallows the cube, his power would increase in an abysmal way. Gojo and the other wizards would feel the new power of Sukuna as well as Goku. Goku remains serene before the situation. So if this is the power that I've desired for so long, it's time to destroy everything that stands in my way. Gojo says, it seems you have reached your most powerful form, but don't think you can win. Not with him here. Sukuna smiles arrogantly, feeling the immense power now coursing through his veins. Goku staring at Sakuna says, Some time ago, you would have been a formidable enemy, but now let me inform you that you're just a poor devil. Return the boy in Adori, all to the cube, and I promise I will spare your life. Sakuna does nothing but laugh at Goku's words. Goju addressing Goku says, Now I wouldn't be Sakuna's opponent at all, but from what you said, you are just remember, we can't kill Sakuna directly. If we do, Itadori will die. Goku nods, knowing that the situation is more complicated than it seems. The battle begins with a burst of speed. Sukuna, with his power renewed, launches himself at Goku with a series of swift, fierce attacks. Each blow he throws shakes the ground and shatters the buildings around him. Goku and his base from dodges the attacks with A's, watching engaging Sukuna's power. The special great frustrated by Goku's calmness angrily shouts, Stop playing around and fight for real! With a confident smile, Goku transforms into Super Saiyajin. His golden hair glows as a wave of energy shakes the atmosphere. Alright, if that's what you want, here I come! Sakuna saying that Goku is still superior even in his Super Saiyajin form, releases more power from the cube he swallowed. The cursed energy around him distorts, and his power increases, reaching the equivalent of a Super Saiyajin 2. Goku, however, shows no signs of concern. The two clash once again, but now, the battle is much more intense. The two fight at speeds that human eyes cannot keep up with, and each blow destroys the surroundings. Sakuna uses his cursed energy techniques to try to catch Goku, but the Saiyajin always finds a way to evade the attacks. You're strong, but you're not yet at the level of my new power. Tell me, Sakuna, do you want to see what real power is? Sakuna, with an arrogant tone, asks, What do you mean? Goku, right now I'm not even fighting with half of my power. Now I'll show you a power that enters the power of the gods. Saiyajin Blue, everyone is impressed. How strange. I can't feel his presence, however, I know that he emanates great power. It's time to put an end to this. Goku prepares a Kamehame. Sukuna didn't know very well what was happening, but for the first time after a long time, Sukuna feels a great fear that he can't explain. Sukuna with fear says, Ah, oh, how is this possible? No! Goku releases his Kamehame! The last attack doesn't kill Sukuna, but it weakens it enough for Gojo to temporarily seal him, allowing Itadori to regain control. Goku would obviously limit his power so as not to slit the throat of our rooster, Itadori. Goku returns to his base state. Gojo with a sarcastic stone says, You're amazing! Let me see if I understood when you change the color of your hair you become stronger? Goku laughs. Something like that, Gojo with a more serious face says, Thank you! Thanks to you all this martyrdom with these curses over. Goku, you're welcome! By the way, in the cube? Ah, Gojo and Goku would stare at Itadori. What's wrong? Why are you looking at me like that? Gojo explains, when you became Sukuna, you swallowed the cube that Goku is looking for. Now here's a question. Will you go to the bathroom and take it out on your own, or do you want Shoko to take care of it? Itadori would make a surprised face. Quee! 
After all that happened, everyone would thank Goku for the help. Shoko would have taken care of everything. Gojo hands the cube to Goku. Gojo, here it is. Now what will you do with it? Goku, thank you. I have to destroy it. By the way, what will you do with the curse that Edadori still has inside his body? Don't worry about it. From here, I will take care of it. If things get ugly, I will be able to fix it. If that cube ceases to exist, I will be able to take care of everything. Goku smiling says, Very well. Goku would stare at the cube. Goku exalted says, Damn, now how do I destroy this? He never asked the high priest about it. Goku had tried everything to destroy it, but nothing would do. Goku, even in his blue face, could destroy the cube. The Saiyajin didn't know what to do. Goku uses his perfect ultra instinct. But still, he wouldn't be able to do anything. Suddenly, Daishinkan appears. Ah, but it's you? Daishinkan says, Hi, son Goku, let me tell you that the only one who can destroy that gap is Zenosama himself. What? You can't help me? Unfortunately not, but you can still do something. You have to merge your power with the power of this world. That is to say, you will need the help of one of your friends to be able to destroy the gap. All would be dumbfounded at what would be happening. Megumi says, What strange guys? Goku, then with the help of Gojo, I can destroy it. Could you help me, please? You only have to hold the cube, the two of you, and deposit a little of their energies. That should be enough for the cube to be destroyed. Goku and Gojo would do according to Daishin Kan's indications, destroying the gap. It worked! Thank you very much, Great Priest, and also to you, Gojo. Very well, let's go to the next gap. Daishin Kan opens the next portal. There's the next one. Good luck, son Goku. I'll be watching you from the temple of King Zenosama. Daishin Kan disappears. Gojo asks Goku who was he? Goku answers in a hurry. He's a really powerful god. He's Zenosama's right hand man. Anyway, I have to go before the portal closes. Thank you very much for everything. Goku shouts as he enters the new portal, leaving everyone speechless at what just happened. Goyo smiles, so you never cease to give surprises. Something tells me that very soon we will see each other. <laughs>